Hello everyone, my name is Irene and today I will be presenting the research project I worked on, which is titled DMD10 is dispensable for the initial development of amphid sensory neurons and their survival in mature C. elegans. So just to start off with some background information, neuronal communication mediates our daily behaviors and responses to environmental stimuli. Upon activation, these neurons will release neurotransmitters which can bind to receptors on other neurons. And this will promote movement or other behaviors that are important for daily functioning. One of the most common and important neurotransmitters is glutamate, which plays a role in learning and memory. Consequently, dysregulation of glutamatergic signaling has been found to contribute to certain psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia and certain neurodegenerative illnesses such as Alzheimer's disease. Our lab is interested in understanding what gene or genes is important for glutamate for proper glutamate signaling at the synapse, and to do this we use C. elegans. The reason why C. elegans are valuable model organisms to work with for this research is because they will allow us to perform less time-consuming yet informative behavioral assays that provide information on eating, um, mating, chemotaxis, and response to negative stimuli, so we will be able to quantify these behaviors. They also have a fast reproduction rate, which means many samples can be generated within a short time span. And lastly, C. elegans have a transparent and defined nervous system, which allows for easy visualization and identification of neurons when performing microscopy imaging. A recent research study found that worms with a mutation on the DMD10 gene exhibited impaired responsiveness to certain mechanosensory and chemosensory stimuli. Specifically, the worms exhibited challenges in detecting certain chemo repellents or touches to the nose. And these stimuli are both dependent on a pair of sensory neurons called ASH. ASH is important for regulating avoidance behavior in response to stimuli that are perceived as harmful for C. elegans. As you can see here in the diagram, a chemosensory or mechanosensory stimuli enters and binds to specific receptors on the ASH neuron, prompting the neuron to release glutamate which can bind to receptors on downstream interneurons that synapse onto motor neurons, resulting in movements such as backing up or reversal. So the research finding about the impaired responsive behavior in those mutant worms suggested that DMD10, which encodes for the DMD10 protein, plays a role in glutamatergic behavior that is dependent on ASH signaling. And just to provide more information about the DMD10 gene, it is responsible for DNA binding activity and its protein DMD10 belongs to the DMD family of transcription factors which are important for regulating gene expression. And we don't know much about what DMD10 does or its specific transcription targets. Based on the observations about downregulated ASH mediated behavior in the DMD10 mutants, it is possible that there was less glutamate release upon sensory stimulation in the mutants. Many factors could explain this. One we hypothesize is that issues with the development or survival of the ASH neurons could potentially account for the impaired behavior that was observed in the mutant DMD10 worms. We tested this hypothesis by counting the number of ASH neurons in the mutant DMD10 worms in using a fluorescent dye. The dye intercalates into the ciliated dendrites of the neurons and labels their plasma memory. So I first transferred worms from the plate to an Eppendorf tube and then added a buffer solution and the fluorescent dye. The Eppendorf, the Eppendorf tube was incubated and then centrifuged so that a pellet of worms could form at the bottom. The worms were then transferred to a cover slip and a slide containing a drop of agar and paralytic was applied on top of the slide. The slide was then ready for in vivo fluorescence microscopy. The ASH was identified based on its known position. I also counted the number of five other nearby amphid sensory neurons because previous studies have found that DMD10 may be expressed in ciliated sensory neurons, including ASK. The worm strains I used were wild type worms, which served as a negative control, DMD10 mutant worms, and CAM1 worms, which served as a positive control. So these CAM1 mutant worms have a defect in taking up the fluorescent dye in its ASI neuron. As you can see here in the picture, ASI, ASI is not labeled. The purpose of using this control was to verify that our methods were reliable enough to detect the absence of a single neuron in the dye labeled worms. We looked at each of the sensory neurons in the wild type, mutant, and positive control. So according to the graph, the x-axis shows the sensory neurons and the y-axis shows the proportion of worms that took up the dye. Um, so this number here would indicate 100%. For example, looking at the ASH, 
we observed that in the, in the wild type and mutant worms, 100% of the worms took up dii and showed ASH in both sides of the head. Whereas in the positive control, almost 100% showed ASH in both sides. Our results demonstrated that the DMD10 worms on average contain all six sensory neurons in both the left and right sides of their head, including ASH like the healthy wild type counterparts. Likewise, on average, the CAM1 worms also show normal fluorescent labeling of all of the sensory neurons, except for ASI, which was to be expected. And this is one of the microscopy images I took that shows that all six sensory neurons were present in both sides of the wild type and mutant DMD10 worms. This data suggests that there is normal neuron development in mature C. elegans, the cells are able to take up DII, the dendrites are properly formed, and the impaired behavioral changes aren't related to altered sensory neuron development. Since we were able to confirm that ASH is intact in the worms, the abnormal behavior could potentially be explained by an impairment that interferes with the release of glutamate or with the binding of glutamate on the interneuron. And these are my references. Lastly, I would like to thank my PI, Dr. Eric Booth, and the Undergraduate Faculty Student Collaborative Fellowship Grant Program at Simmons for their support. Thank you for listening.